and that depending on how fast it is accelerating, it might end in a big rip where everything tears apart. It's also possible that it will continue to expand, but at a slower rate. The universe wouldn't rip apart, but would become dark, cold, and lifeless. If dark energy turns out to be constant, a constant property of space, and continues at the same rate that it is now, the universe will keep expanding forever, and it will be a very sad state, I think. In the end, it just chills out. Everything cools down. Evidence for the big chill and all of the theories for the end of the universe, in part, come from the Hubble Space Telescope. It has been orbiting Earth since 1990 and has an unobstructed view of the cosmos. The extraordinary images it beams back to Earth are amazing in their clarity and detail. And because of Hubble, scientists can make better predictions about how the universe will end. So here is an example of a, a very deep field that was taken by the Hubble Space Telescope, which literally you point the space telescope at a single region uh, in space. And if you looked at this from a typical uh, ground-based image before Hubble was launched, first of all, it's, it's a, literally a, almost size of a postage stamp. And so suddenly, the first Hubble deep field that was ever taken had 4,000 galaxies that looked just like the galaxies here that were never visible before from the ground. A tremendous power. Each of these smudges in their own right um, is another galaxy. Each one of these galaxies contains about 100 billion stars. Astronomers eagerly await all images from Hubble, each bringing them closer to solving the mystery about the fate of the universe. Through image processing with computers and differencing frames on, taken on different nights, we can take out the other galaxies in the image and we're left with just this blob. Looks like nothing to you, but that's supernova. And this is an object that could never have been discovered before Hubble Space Telescope was launched. Hubble sees more than just stars and galaxies. It might just be on to one of the key ingredients of space, an invisible ingredient that could put the brakes on dark energy's effect and cause a big chill. That's dark matter. Scientists talk about dark matter as the substance that holds the universe together and could prevent a big rip. Evidence that dark matter exists is seen in some of Hubble's images of nearby galaxies. It sometimes appears as though other galaxies surround them. The other galaxies are not really there at all. Rather, they are reflections of more distant galaxies coming from behind. Astronomers suspect this optical illusion is dark matter, causing a weird distortion of light called gravitational lensing. The light from the more distant galaxies is literally bent by the curvature of space caused by stars and dark matter in its path. The more dark matter there is between Earth and the distant galaxy, the more the light will be bent and the greater the force to cause a big chill. The gravitational lensing is a tremendous tool for the astronomer because we can measure the distortion in background galaxies and use it to trace the distribution of dark matter on various scales. We're looking at a distribution of idealized galaxies here on the sky, and the light from these distant galaxies is passing through clumps of dark matter. What you look at is not really what's happening. Uh, it's a bit like wearing spectacles and not knowing that you're wearing them. And if you can tell how much that bending is occurring, you can map the dark matter, and you can also see, well, if there's dark matter there, is the universe around that dark matter behaving the way it should given the gravity or not? Identifying which energy force dominates, dark matter or dark energy, will give scientists more confidence about whether a big chill or a big rip will be our fate. The best evidence shows dark energy as the driving force, but by how much? Solving this mystery depends on astronomers finding ways to measure how fast the universe is moving. On Earth, it's simple to determine how fast something moves. An airplane, for example, is relatively close. 
we can look at it and calculate its speed by estimating the distance it travels and timing how long it takes to get from one point to another. But a star's light can travel for millions or billions of years before it can be seen on Earth. By the time its light gets here, the star will be long gone, and it's too far away to gauge its speed or distance traveled with any certainty. The universe is expanding. Only scientists cannot give precise answers about how fast. The mystery moves closer to being solved by imaging the cosmos with greater precision. You couldn't even observe the galaxies that are in this image before Hubble Space Telescope was launched. So the, the increase in our capability with technology recently has been astounding. It's enabled us to do things to chart the evolution of the universe in a way that we never could have imagined. Clearer images from space make it easier to estimate the rate of expansion. If the universe continues to expand with time, then ultimately all of the energy sources, the nuclear furnaces and stars, would run out and die, and the universe would actually get very cold, and there'd be something called a big chill. In the big chill scenario, Earth could become a lonely, cold planet as the universe expands. Distances between stars grow so vast that they nearly disappear from view. Over time, they burn out. And eventually, the entire universe ends in a frozen state. These are ideas that sprang from the work of Einstein and Hubble. Only neither of them lived long enough to see the results. Imagine what Edwin Hubble and Albert Einstein would think if they were alive today, watching the progress in the subject. You know, Einstein thinking about the expanding universe as a natural solution of his equations, but puzzled, you know, that the universe didn't appear to be changing. Edwin Hubble, desperate to measure whether the universe was slowing down in its expansion. In fact, you know, they were both wrong. It's speeding up. The time that Einstein developed the general theory we didn't know that there were other galaxies outside of our own Milky Way galaxy. And we didn't know that the universe was expanding. And in fact, Einstein himself, despite the fact that his equations were screaming at him that the universe had to be evolving, didn't have enough confidence in that result to say the universe must be expanding or the universe must be contracting. Still, his work led to the scientific breakthroughs that would identify dark matter and dark energy, the forces that could cause a big chill. This sphere demonstrates the principles behind a big chill. The marbles coming out of this sphere are like stars that were formed following the Big Bang. Dark energy propels the stars outward. Dark matter slows them down. In a big chill, the expansion would continue but the nuclear fuel that causes the stars to burn will eventually run out. From Earth's perspective, the first thing to go would be sunlight. The sun dims as it exhausts its last bits of nuclear fuel. Earth would freeze and become lifeless. And billions of years after humans are gone, the cosmos expands out of view. A few newer stars might remain, but most would have long moved away. The furnace powering the universe burns out. The darkened universe continues to expand, a frozen and lifeless remnant of its once vibrant existence. Eventually, if this keeps going, if, if nothing changes in the, in the composition of this energy density, the universe will continue to expand forever. It's going to get colder and colder. And eventually, even the gal our neighboring galaxies will be receding from us so fast that we won't be able to see them. So the universe is going to get cold and dark, and, uh, and it will be a very lonely place. Astronomers have much to learn about the influence of dark energy and dark matter. And much of the newest information is coming from this probe in deep space. It's sending back information that's helping scientists to interpret the history and the fate of the universe. 